Hi everyone, Morgan here from Living Holistic Health. I just wanted to make a video today uh, because about a seminar that we attended, Adrian and I attended on Sunday. It was an all day event and we're uh, really excited to let you guys know what we learnt at this seminar. So what was really important, so the, the topic was on immune dysregulation so through children to adults so i suppose this seminar was just really helping us to in reinforcing that we are doing the right thing um, we're doing the latest we're up to date with the latest research and we're really focused on using um focused on the gut with immune dysregulation so as a naturopath and a nutritionist, we really do look at the gut as the most important thing in balancing the immune system. Because as you've probably heard Adrian speak before, um, he's really reinforcing that the gut is the centre to all wellness. And uh, well, seventy percent of your immune system is in your gut. So um, if you don't get the gut right, you can't get the immune system right. So I just wanted to give you a couple of, a um, little bit of a rundown of exactly what, what was reinforced to us on the weekend and, and what you might see in the clinic um, coming up in the next few weeks anyway. So we really um, wanted to, what we really focus on in the clinic when we're working on the immune system and what they, the seminar really um, drove home to us was the gut barrier and really, really focusing on repairing the gut wall or the gut lining. So that leaky gut issue, um, even though you might not have digestive complaints, which most people do anyway, but uh, if you don't have digestive complaints, but you've got um, allergies or asthma or eczema, if you're, um, not focused on repairing the gut lining then that's not never going to really recover so you're never going to get out of that eczema allergy uh, asthma issue so what we want to focus on in the clinic and what we focus on with all our patients and we have been from uh, get-go is focusing on healing that leaky gut so um, and that's with probiotics. Probiotics do a fabulous work, uh, do fabulous work in protecting and creating that barrier, um, so leaky gut doesn't occur. Uh, another thing is slippery elm powder. Um, something that I actually forget to tell people to take uh, sometimes, and it's just um, this seminar really showed that slippery elm powder can really heal that gut lining and it's just something that you can just pick up from the supermarket it's cheap it's easy it's a good fiber supplement and that can really help uh, repair that gut lining um, can't go past the the nutrients needed to heal the gut lining which is vitamin a vitamin d zinc and glutamine so they're they're really important uh, nutrients needed to heal the gut lining so when we do heal the gut lining what is the cause of this um, leaky gut so Adrian talks a little a lot about leaky gut in all his videos uh, so you guys probably know just as much as we do when it comes to what's causing that leaky gut and just reinforcing those for those people that uh, are new here um, so infection so bacteria viruses parasites can all cause leaky gut gluten gluten is a big one that uh, causes leaky gut you don't have to have celiac disease but gluten will cause leaky gut in all everybody so and that's just how we our body breaks down and breaks down gluten so and absorbs it so um, it, it's we weren't designed to eat gluten so our body has created a mechanism where it gives us a leaky, little bit of leaky gut for it to break for us to break down the gluten uh, processed foods going back to processed foods like anything in a can or a packet that's got numbers on the the label of what's in there and stuff like that that's that's causing leaky gut 
uh, drugs, that lots of medications can break down leaky gut barrier as well. Um, and chemicals in our environment, we don't talk a lot about chemicals in environment, which we should be really focusing on. And I think the next topic on um, hormonal and hormonal health and stress that we we've got coming up uh, next week, we'll be talking a lot more about the chemicals in our environment and how they really do impact us. Um, so chemicals break down that and give us that leaky gut issue. So we need to get rid of as many chemicals as we can. Um, another thing we learned about how fabulous mushrooms were. So mushrooms carry um, hot have something called beta glucans in them and they're really good for uh, uh, treating recurrent infections so if those people that are constantly getting sick all the time uh, mushrooms are fabulous for that so uh, making sure that you have mushrooms daily if you're getting constant reoccurring infections and they've also been shown in research to reduce allergy so uh, your allergy response so that's why we give a lot of people um, like a mushroom powder when they've got an allergy as well because there's a great amount of research that show mushrooms can reduce allergies and um, asthma uh, last but not least going back to the toxic load that's in our environment so pollution um, there's a lot of pollution in our environment these days so many more cars are on the road uh, we're using a lot more chemical based substances like makeup and um, all sorts of stuff so there's a lot, something called phthalates you may have heard of phthalates before and they're really uh, really bad for our immune system so they cause a dysregulation in our immune system so these these can really uh, cause a lot of allergy and eczema like eczema um, and asthma so think about what's in your um, what's in your environment and that's that's what we need to really minimize all the chemicals that are in our environment uh, one last thing that we just um, thought was really important to let you guys know about is chemi um, chlorine the chemical chlorine found in chlorinated pools actually inhaling them can cause more of an asthma issue um, than a lot of other things in the environment like dust mites or something like that so chlorine uh, is a big big risk factor for increasing um, the incidence of asthma in children especially because we all want to make sure our kids can swim safely and, and we take them to a chlorinated pool for this but that chlorinated pool not the ingestion of chlorine is much but the inhalation of it so getting through our airways and into our lungs so if you're finding that your kids are causing uh, getting more asthma or dermatitis eczema in this in the months that they're doing swimming lessons then it most likely is the chlorine that's causing the issue so just a little bit of food for thought. Uh, if you want any more advice or um, have any more questions on immune dysregulation and what we what we learnt on the weekend, please feel free to give us a call or send us a message. Okay, thanks guys. Bye.